So what do you think? This is our MX-5 Mark 2.5. It's gonna be our next EV conversion in the beautiful yellow color. I said that with a straight, it's fairly rust free for an MX-5, but we do need to redo all the subframes, bushes, brakes, etc. cetera. Um, I've not had any hate mail yet from any of the owners clubs, but we'll see. Uh, we're basically going to be converting this to electric over the next couple of months, probably. Uh, maybe quicker if we get time. But with all the coronavirus stuff going on, who knows? So we've laid out all the parts here that we're going to be fitting to the car. And we're now going to talk through with you everything we're putting in the car, step by step. We're going to start with the battery pack. So these are LG Chem battery modules. Each one is 2.6 kilowatts. And they are a 4P3S configuration, which means that they have four cells in parallel and then they're linked in series within each of these modules. Um, each brick is about 12 kilos roughly and they are complete aluminium blocks so they're really nice form factor. Um, they then have four fixing holes on them and a battery management connector on the side. The plan with our pack is to then mount all 10 in one pack in the front of the car and they'll be mounted onto our coolant plates so these have an in and out and we are gonna mount them like so with two modules on either side. So we'll have three of these in total, two, two packs of four, then a pack of two by itself. Between the module and the coolant plate, we have heat transfer pad. So just a sticky back pad that helps heat transfer. And then we have our custom made buzz bars, which will link between each of the modules to run them in series. Um, as the motor we're using, maximum voltage is 132 volts. Moving on to our contactor setup, we're running a positive and a negative contactor as well as a pre-charge system. The Hyper 9 controller does have some pre-charge stuff in there, but because we're running chargers, the, the etc., we we're going to run a separate pre-charge and one of our contactor controllers. And then we're going to have a nice high voltage connector so we can unplug the pack if necessary to lift it out of the car. Now on this build, we're gonna be running an Orion battery management system. So this is an Orion 36 system here. Um, it has some IO connection. It has current sensor and coolant, um, coolant temperature sensors going to that one. And then behind this one here, it has a 36, well it's not more than 36 pin in that for the cell tap wires. That then comes with a harness, which connects into the modules, temperature sensors and the connector for the 1000 amp current sensor that we're going to be running on this build. We then have our own IO loom, which plugs into the zero EV low voltage junction box. Um, this is a very simple box. It just allows really easy breakout of the Orion system. It also has the output for the charger as well. And it takes in the uh, PP and PC lines as well, so the control pilot pilot line after that we have our hyper 9 system so this consists of as a kit it comes as a motor controller and io loom this is the lower voltage system which is classed as 100 volt they also do 144 volt um, it comes with the main inverter with a coolant plate that you bolt to the bottom um, they don't have to run the coolant plate. There's some people that don't, but we recommend doing it just to try and maintain temperature, stop the inverter from overheating. And then you have your air-cooled Hyper 9 motor here with your free phase AC input from the controller and your encoder lines and temperature sensor. Now to keep the car running as normal, we need to basically maintain power steering and the brake system. To do this on this car, we are gonna be using a Vauxhall GM power steering system. This 12 volt um, complete one unit, including the header tank in one. Um, there's other options on the market. This is just gonna be best suited for the MX-5. And we have our vacuum pump. So this will maintain our vacuum pressure on the braking system throughout. Uh, we're then gonna put this also into a small reservoir so it's not running all the time. So we'll have the pressure switch basically that when it gets to a set vacuum pressure, it'll shut down, obviously small water pump to run the coolant around the batteries and the inverter. This is our DC to DC. We're gonna be running in the car. Most people, best thing to think of this as is the alternator. So this basically takes the higher voltage battery and converts it to 12 volts. 
Um, so we're going to mount this in the rear of the vehicle where the fuel tank is, along with our 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger and our type 2 connector, which is where we charge. This should hopefully fit where the original petrol tap, petrol cap was, petrol fill up point was. Um, this then links into the charger, which does your AC input to the charger and your communication lines. And then we have our DC outputs on the charger, which will go to our batteries. Now, with this being 6.6, .6, we've got a 26 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, we're probably going to get, say, roughly four hours to full charge from empty. Taking a look around the car, it's fairly clean and tidy. Could do with a good wash. Um, 82,000 miles. Uh, the paintwork is a little bit tatty here and there, so we'll have to repaint probably the rear bumper and the front bumper and touch-ups and bits. Um, but overall, it should turn out as a really nice, tidy car. We're actually going to reanimate the original clocks, um, probably using an Arduino. So you don't have any extra BMS displays or anything like that. Everything will be on the original clock. Um, so our plan is to obviously have the original fuel gauge as state of charge. We'll have battery temperature on the temperature gauge, our speed and our revs, so motor RPM, road speed. The only thing we haven't worked out what we're going to do with yet is the oil temperature, but I'm sure we'll come up with, with something to go there. So this is our 1.6 twin overhead cam Mazda MX-5 engine. They're actually a really good engine, to be honest. Uh, Non-interference if you break a cam belt, just put a new one on, know where you go. Um, I actually really like these, but it's all going to come out. Uh, we are going to use the original radiator, so we've only got to run one coolant system on this car. Uh, main thing is engine, gearbox, exhaust system, fuel lines, fuel tank out, or the original braking system going to try and keep all the try and reuse as much of the power steering lines as possible onto the new pump let's have a quick look under the car as you can see the subframes are fairly crusty um the plan is we're going to drop all of these out um we're going to rebush the whole lot clean them up repaint them make it look clean and tidy before we go and drop the back to pack in we'll probably also clean down the engine bay and possibly repaint it so when you lift that bonnet up at a show, it looks absolutely immaculate. The underside of the car isn't actually too bad. The rest of it has been uh, undersealed in its, over its lifetime. Um, the rust on the seals is actually really, really good, uh, which is one of the reasons we bought this car. We didn't have to do loads and loads of welding and repair work because the MX-5s are unfortunately renowned for it. Um, and then in the rear, we have got, as much as the 1.6, it does have the 7-inch diff. So we can upgrade the diff if we need to, to a limit slip. We're also going to change this from the 4.1 to the 3.6. So we can basically get a better ratio with our reduction gearbox on the Hyper 9. On the corner weights, we're sat at 949.5 kilograms. It's actually lighter than I thought it'd be. Well, that was easy ish but i do have dirty hands um engine and gearbox are gone all ice related bits have now been removed uh we now have to keep everything a full clean down and then get it freely scanned and we can start modeling and designing the battery pack and all the mounts for the motor and gearbox um, but looking at it there's enough room to fit the 26 kilowatt battery pack in the front and there's enough room in the tunnel to fit the hyper 9 wood reduction gearbox thank you for watching please subscribe and look out for part two